Dr. Stephen Zemanik here, celebrating with you Resurrection Sunday, you got it, from quarantine. Resurrection Sunday is traditionally a time that we gather together and celebrate as a church family. The quarantines prevented us from corporately celebrating the single most important holiday in the life of the church. This un precedented event of not being able to celebrate Resurrection Sunday together reminds us of two very important things. Number one, the miracle, and number two, the mystery of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Over 30 years, I've had the honor of presiding over Resurrection Sunday services. Everything from huge pageants to tiny little church startups that were located in homes or in the basement somewhere of a rented facility. And yet this is the single most unique Resurrection Sunday I have ever participated in because all over the country churches are closed and we're not able to gather together to celebrate. And there is a sense of frustration about it, but I want to draw your attention to the blessing of it. Because God uses this difficulty to produce a blessing in our lives if we will focus on Him rather than on the events that would normally take place. In John chapter 20, we see a record of the first resurrection where Jesus rose from the dead. And we get from it some unique perspectives that you and I can incorporate into our quarantine resurrection service. The first is in verses 1 and 2, and I'll read those for you. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and she saw there that the stone had been removed from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Resurrection Sunday reminds us that we are not God. Jesus' physical resurrection is outside of our realm of understanding. Jesus' physical resurrection is a reminder that we serve one who is more powerful than we are ourselves. She had gone to the tomb to do what she expected to do on the day she expected to do it, and yet God had different plans. You and I fully expected to gather together and to worship him as we had planned in the place we had planned, but God had different plans. When we find ourselves in situations we cannot control, it is a stark reminder that we're not God, that we're not nearly as powerful as we've made ourselves out to be. And Resurrection Sunday is a reminder that there is a God and thankfully, we're not him. Often, we're reminded of the power of God when we find powerlessness in our own lives and situations. Yes, we're quarantined on Resurrection Sunday, but the blessing of it is simply this. In the midst of what we don't have, we are reminded again of what we do have. Just like Mary ran to the tomb and was reminded of what she didn't have, her expectations fulfilled. She would soon be reminded of what she did have, a Savior who had risen from the dead. The second thing that this quarantine situation does for us on Resurrection Sunday is that it reveals our frailty. You see, the foolish, they're going to attempt to fit Jesus and his resurrection into their limited understanding. The facts of Jesus' resurrection are stripped of their power and they're replaced with cute, fairy tales because we're unwilling to expand our understanding. For some, even right now, this isn't a real Resurrection Sunday because we're not able to do it the way we want. We have built Resurrection Sunday into something different than what it's intended to be. It's intended to be the marker, the historical event that signifies God can do anything. And yet we have stripped it of that by turning it into just another holiday we celebrate on a particular day. We see this when John and Peter in verses 3 to 10 race over to 
the tomb and find it empty and are completely bewildered by what they see. Their frailty of understanding is revealed when it comes in contact with the immensity of the reality of what God can do. You and I are in quarantine, and we can either maintain the frailty of our understanding, this isn't a real event because I can't do X, Y, and Z on the day that I had planned, or we can let the Holy Spirit begin to experience expand our understanding, remove the frailty of our thinking so that we begin to see the power of the risen Savior in a way we had never seen it before. Often the blessings of God are revealed by stripping away all of the things that we have added to the blessings, and we see that with a quarantine. In this event where we cannot do what we would normally do, we are forced to focus on what God has already done. He has died to pay for humanity's sins. He has risen from the dead so that we could incorporate that forgiveness into our lives. And if God has raised Jesus from the dead, nothing else is impossible for him to do. So we see that Resurrection Sunday reminds us that we're not God. In verses 3 and 10, as you read it, you see that Resurrection Sunday reveals our frailty. And in this last little section, and I'll read it for you, in verses 11 down to 18, we see that Resurrection Sunday, especially during a time of quarantine, remains factual, whether we experience it the way we had anticipated or not. Notice what it says in verse 11 down to 18. But Mary stood outside facing the tomb crying. As she was crying, she stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where Jesus' body had been lying. They said to her, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. Having said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, though she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus says to her, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Supposing that he was a gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have removed him, tell me where you put him, and I will take him away. And Jesus says, Mary. Turning around, she says to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus says, Don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to the brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, and she announced it to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them what he had said to her. The resurrection of Jesus Christ remains factual, whether we get to participate in it in a way we expected or not. Jesus' physical resurrection remains grounded in the historical fact, regardless of our situation. If we don't celebrate the resurrection of Jesus because we're quarantined, it doesn't eliminate the historical reality. It shows our inability to accept the historic reality. Opening ourselves to the facts of Jesus' physical resurrection opens us up to the power of the gospel, the good news itself. After meeting with Jesus, she went and told the disciples, I have seen him. You and I are in quarantine, not able to see each other, but we are able to see him who was raised from the dead. This God who died for your sins and mine was raised from the dead, and he is alive today and one day will return. Those are historic facts. Often, we see Resurrection Sunday turned into much more of a production than it is a recital of the historical reality. And for many, the event itself is secondary to all of the pomp and the circumstance that we have surrounded around it through various services that we provide on this great Sunday. Today, in quarantine, all of that is stripped away. You and I have the right, the responsibility, and the privilege to view the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a reminder that we are not God. 
a reminder that we are still frail in our thinking and need His Holy Spirit to expand our understanding of Him as we read His scriptures, and the fact that these are historical events, not just church events. If you're not a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm asking you to give your life to Him today on this Resurrection Sunday. Here's how you do it. You simply talk to Him. We call it prayer. And you simply tell Him, Father, I'm a sinner. I've lived my life as if you don't matter. I'm asking you to forgive me for that, to come into my life and to be my God. I'm going to serve you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. As you pray that, the Holy Spirit's going to transform your life. God's going to remove from you every sin you've ever done. That means your record is clear. When he looks at you, no fault. And one day, when you die, you'll get to be in heaven. The great blessing is between now and then, you will be able to live a lifestyle that is built on joy, peace, and a genuine sense of purpose because you're living the way you were created. Resurrection Sunday is not about church services. Church services are about Resurrection Sunday. If you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and you're like I am quarantined in your house, don't be sad and don't be dismayed. Rather, use this time to let the Holy Spirit remind you that you are not God. Let him remind you of the frailty of your thinking and let him change it. Let him remind you again of the historical fact of resurrection and the fact that it is not linked to a church service. Rather, church services are built on that historic fact. Whatever you're doing today, I'm asking you to remember two very important things. Number one, God loves you very much. And number two, I am proud to be your pastor. The Lord be with you.